Hello everyone, I welcome you all to my channel. In this video, we are going to see components of embedded programs. In embedded system, embedding a software into an hardware is very very important task. That means we have to embed a program into the processor. So normally this programming is quite different from the ordinary PC programs. So for this we will be using the language C. In embedded system it is called as embedded C. The three important components for embedded programs are state machine, circular buffer and queue. First let us see what is state machine that is finite state machine. So consider a system. If we are giving an input to the system, depending upon the input, the system will react and it will process the it and it will give an output. So this can be characterized by a state machine. For example, consider a manager is in the office. He is having a pune and nearby the office there is a tea shop. So whenever the manager feels tired, he will give instruction to the pune to get a cup of tea from the nearby tea shop. So when the pune receives the instruction, he will go to the nearby tea shop and get a cup of tea and he will give it to the manager. So this process can be characterized by a simple state machine. So a state machine consists of finite number of inputs and outputs as well as finite number of states so that only we are saying it is finite state machine. To understand this state machine clearly we can consider an example seat belt controller. Nowadays in every car there is seat belt controller. So in case of any accidents occur if you wear the seat belt means then there will be less damage. So wearing the seat belt is very very essential. Now let us see what is the principle behind this seat belt controller. So in seat belt controller there are three inputs and one output. The three inputs are seat sensor, belt sensor and a timer. Then output is a buzzer sound. So when a person sits in the seat, the seat sensor will give information to the timer and the timer starts. So within a particular interval of time, this person should wear the seat belt otherwise the timer will give information to the buzzer so you will be hearing a buzzer sound that we should wear the belt so if we put the belt within that time interval means then there will be no buzzer sound because the belt sensor will switch off the timer so this is the overall principle behind the seat belt controller now using this we are going to draw the state diagram So this is the seat belt controller state diagram. So it consists of four states. One is ideal state. Ideal state means no person is sitting in the seat. Ideal. The seat is in ideal state. Then the second one is the person sits in the seat that is seated. Then the third state is the person put the belt that is belted state. And the fourth state is the buzzer zone. So that is called as buzzer state. So there are four states. So Ideal state means if no person sit in the seat means then we will be sitting in the ideal state. Then when a person sits in the seat then we move to the seated state. So if the person does not wear the belt within a particular interval of time means then it will give information to the buzzer and we will be hearing the buzzer sound. Uh, if within that particular interval if the person put the belt means then he comes to the belted state. Then again, when we are um, getting down from the car, we'll be go again it goes to the ideal state. So using these states, we can easily understand what is the principle behind this controller. So state machine is very very essential. The second component is circular buffer. So circular buffer, it is a data structure that is used for handling streaming data in an efficient way. So it consists of two elements, one is head and another one is tail. Head indicates the starting position of the circular buffer. So if head is equal to zero means, meaning is there is no data present in the buffer. That means the buffer is empty. Now consider a circular buffer of size 8. That means we can store 8 values. 
So now we are going to NQ 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So these values uh, we are going to enter inside this buffer. So here initially the head position is equal to 0 and the tail position is equal to 0. After enqueuing each data, the head should be incremented. This is the procedure for circular buffer. So first, we are enqueuing 5. So when we are enqueuing 5, the head is incremented. That is, head is equal to 1. So Next, we are 6. In. So now, the head is again incremented to 2. We are enqueuing 7. So head is incremented to 3. Then 8. Head is equal to 4. Then 9. Head is equal to 5. 10 head is equal to 6 so like this the process goes on for enqueuing the data at the same time if you want so dequeuing 5 6 7 that means we have to remove the data 5 6 7 from the circular buffer initially so we are dequeuing 5 that means we are removing 5 from the buffer so at that time the tail is incremented we are dequeuing 6 now tail is again incremented to 2 we are dequeuing 7 the tail is incremented to 3 so, like this, the process goes on. The third component is Q. So, Qs are used in signal processing as well as event processing. So, here this Q is also referred to as a buffer, but it is an elastic buffer. We can change the size of the Q depending upon the data arriving. So, an example. Now, we are considering Q size is 5. That means at a time we can store 5 data. So we are going to NQ 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So first we have to enter 1, then we have to enter 2, then 3, then 4 and then 5. So here also we are having 2 elements. One is front and another one is rear. So first we are in 1. So when we NQ 1, the rear is incremented that means rear is equal to 1 we are enqueuing 2 so now rear is equal to 2 we are enqueuing 3 so rear is equal to then 3 enqueuing 4 rear is equal to enqueuing 5 rear is equal to 5 now we have to retrieve the data from the queue that means we are going to dequeue it so dequeuing 1 2 3 first we are dequeuing 1 so friend is incremented friend is equal then, to 1 dequeuing 2 friend is equal to 2, dequeuing 3, friend is equal to 3. So, like that the process goes on. So, these are the three important components of embedded programs. So, if you like this video, kindly subscribe my channel and share with your friends. Thank you.